Hello, welcome back to Calgary Barbell, Bryce. I like the new intro. The video is better. I think. Glad to have you here. Yeah, it's happy to be while. here. You know. Yeah. Always appreciative of you know being invited back. Where have you been? Around, <laughs> out and about. <laughs> um, so I just got back from the Cayman Islands, from North Americans, North American Powerlifting Federation Championships that I competed at, um, and yeah. I mean, where do you want me to start? It just it sounds like a lot of fun. Cayman Islands. You just it was leave, hot. It was insanely hot. In Calgary. The first thing I did when I landed at like noon, midday, Cayman Islands, feels like 48 degrees, 100,000 percent humidity, like 38 degrees before the humidity. I was like, I got to get groceries before I get settled in my hotel. And people were like, oh, there's a grocery store like right nearby. Just a short walk. We'll just go, we'll go get some groceries. 20 minutes either way. <laughs> 2 p.m. in the afternoon, middle of the blazing hot sun. I was not acclimated to the heat at all. Was arguably one of the decisions I regret the most in recent memory. They don't have Uber? They do, but everybody's like, uh, I don't know. I just like everybody kind of talked me out of it because they were like, everything's so expensive here, it's crazy, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, and then they were like, oh, it's not a big deal, it's just a quick walk. And I got suckered in. I just <laughs> threw a call an Uber like after walking halfway back. I was like, I don't know if I can do this. But anyways. I think, I think we almost need to reference back to the last video before we start this video. Uh, now that I think of it, because it the, left the, the off darkest timeline. On a pretty dark note, yeah. I think a lot of people were worried. <laughs> I mean, justifiably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair I questioned enough. myself if this is something that we should put out because it's like, should we be focusing on putting stuff that's like uplifting and positive so uh -huh. that people feel good, you know, when they watch our videos? Yeah. But I kind of felt also like I want to show the raw lens of it all. Yeah. Right? And like, that's kind of what we've always done. So, well, yeah, I mean, I think that's one of the things that people appreciated about us even early on. Like, the. That first video we put out where I'm like screaming and throwing my belt because my hip was in pain. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, we definitely, I have uh, like an emotional response to peaking. And I, I think I get, I start to like feel overwhelmed when the fatigue creeps up and like my ADHD gets worse and I just like have a harder time coping and dealing with stuff. And I sometimes end up in these like, bouts of depression and I was depressed for a couple of days um, leading into that video that we filmed and I just like I couldn't like if we were going to film the video and you wanted me to talk that's what was coming out because that's like all that was going on um, I think definitely that period of time I handled a lot better than other similar periods of time because I've been through that now a couple times I kind of know the signs of like okay, I might be getting depressed. Like yeah. this, this might not be good. I should tell some people. Um, and I'd like reached out to you and talked to Selene about it. And like having people kind of understand where I was at made it easier for me to manage. And then it like passed quicker than it has in the past. So, I mean, by the time I left for the meet, I was good. You know what I mean? Like I, the episode or whatever you want to call it had kind of passed and I was feeling much more mentally myself again. Um, I still was very unsure of how things were going to go in terms of the meat and my performance and my health afterwards and um, you know all that kind of stuff but I definitely wasn't like I didn't I didn't live in that place that was very much just like a snapshot in time that just I mean that's honestly what it was mm -hmm. but you know that wasn't a, like a, a chronic thing luckily so yeah it's probably good that we touch on that mm -hmm. at the start <laughs> yeah 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 uh, I kind of, yeah, I, I kind of almost forgot. And then when I posted the my meat wrap up on Instagram, people were like, "I'm glad that you're okay." I guess, like, <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, I don't know, but yeah, I'm good. I'm good. So I guess run me through meat day. We start with squats. How yep. are you feeling? How was the knee? How was the? So I mean, warm ups felt great. Uh, I didn't didn't really have any knee pain or issues. I definitely, I took more Advil and Tylenol than I had all training cycle, which is something that I try to refrain from using for the most part, but I definitely had taken some like anti-inflammatories and painkillers and stuff 
just Advil and Tylenol, but um, like leading into the meet, I think my last like couple of heavy sessions, I had a Tylenol. Um, and then the day of the meet, I had like an Advil and a Tylenol because mm -hmm. I was like, I'm doing what I'm doing. I don't want to feel it. This is happening. Like, you know, was what it was going to be. So I'm not sure if it was partially due to, the, you know, likely a combination of like that, the adrenaline, the like, you know, all the kinds of things that go into the, the meet day um, emotions. But uh, yeah, I mean, warm ups went fine. I hit my first at 292 and a half. And it like, I, I came off the platform like laughing. Like I, I just remember looking at Garrett and laughing so hard and being like, we're gonna like crush some shit today. Like I felt pretty fired up on that first squat. It moved yeah. super well. Um, so we loaded 312 and a half, I believe, for my second. And as has been the case with like my last number of meets, I just didn't execute especially well on my second. I, I got a little loose. Um, there was a bit of a sticking point. It slowed down a little bit more than I would have liked. And we had, you know, uh, my, my ideal would have been 325 for a third. But we ended up loading 320 because we were like, eh, you know, that wasn't like a perfect second attempt. And I don't think that I actually end up squatting any higher. But when I think about squatting high and like cue myself to try to squat high, it's like, oh, just cut this next one high. Like cut it high. And that's what I'm telling myself in my head. My depth doesn't change at all between my second and my third. But I just, I, I always feel like I sink my second too low. And then I think about going high on my third. They go to the same depth and my third like moves better than my second, which again is what happened, right? Yeah. Like I hit my third at 320 and was like, shit, I should have loaded 3.5. <laughs> You know, but the uh, your second attempt lagged, and I think it lagged for everyone. Mm. So it's hard to know like how it moved. Yeah, I think Selena said the same thing. And in the chat, I think Bryce Lewis was saying he was like three seventeen point five. Oh yeah, it was like he thought that was all he had left. But yeah, yeah, the three twenty flew. So yeah, yeah, it moved well. It felt good. You know, uh, it was a two and a half kilo PR. So pretty happy with that. I mean, I think I definitely had had more on the day. Yeah. But yeah, hopefully I can get back there again. Yeah. And and do more soon. But yeah. And you out squatted Mike T. I did. Yeah. I out squatted him and out benched him. Yeah. I didn't out total him though. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah. So bench again felt good. Uh warm-ups were fine, you know, everything felt like it should. Bench training was kind of like neither here nor there. It didn't really seem like it was going amazingly well. There were some indications that I was in a good spot. You know, I, I came in for one of my last heavy workouts and took 192 for like eight singles. And normally if I'm gonna start that high for like a, a protocol where I'm supposed to stay around an RPE, I'll, I'll get like two or three and then the RPE will start climbing and I'll have to bring the weight down. And But this, you know, this last session, I was able to take 192 and it just like didn't really get any harder. So I was like, okay, that's probably a good sign. You know, I think my bench is in a good place and projections put me around 205, 210, which 205 is a PR. So um, yeah, we opened at 185, went to 192 and a half, I think for my second, maybe 195. You got, you got it, <laughs> pull it up. It's fine. We gotta get it right. We gotta get it right. Uh, 200 for my second. Yeah, 187.5. 187.5, okay. 200. 200, and then 205. 205. Yeah. Um, and again, just like, I don't know what it is. I just like didn't execute on my second as well as I could have. Um, benched my third and it moved about the same as my second. And I was like, oh, hmm. probably had a little bit more there too. Mm -hmm. But again, when you see the second move that little bit slow, the last thing you want to do is be like, nope, we're sticking to the plan. You know, don't, don't, uh, like don't take any of that information that we're gaining right now and, and put it into play. Like you have to, you have to react to what's, uh, what's showing up or seeming to show up. So we took 205 again, you know, two and a half kilo PR. Uh, my ideal plan for the day, I think was 207 and a half, maybe 210 if I was having like a phenomenal day. I think you had 210. I, I, I may have. It's hard. It's always hard to know looking back at it and being like, let's try it right now. Because <laughs> if you look at when I did, I think it was nationals when I hit 202, I tried to go from 202 to 205 
and 202 wasn't bad. Like it wasn't that slow. Yeah. I thought for sure, like, okay, yeah, two and a half, I'll hit this. And I missed it. Mm -hmm. So bench especially is one of those ones where it's kind of hard to tell. But so that leads into deadlifts. <sighs> Fucking deadlifts, man. <laughs> deadlifts are so stupid sometimes. And like I used to be like the deadlift guy. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And I feel like I just have not been able to get back there. I don't know. Like I'm I'm sure it has a lot to do with the inability to like train my deadlift very well, given that I've uh, you know, my last couple of meets where my deadlift hasn't really performed, I haven't been super healthy. Yep. And the deadlift work that I have done has been really submaximal. And I haven't really gotten to a point, if I look back and kind of reference my squat training to my deadlift training, my squat, I definitely got it to a point where I could push it. You know what I mean? I could work in and around my opener. I hit singles at like 277, 280, 285, 290, 292 and a half. Like, really really good mm -hmm. work in there the deadlift i think i got a single at like 335 maybe i got one at 340 i missed 345 yeah and then the next week came back realized that i had done the same stupid thing that i had done in terms of changing my bracing and getting overextended that i had done in nats prep when i missed 337 or whatever yeah and was like, oh, so came in, pulled 342 and a half, and my last session was like, okay, I think my deadlift's good. But like that training is just not as productive, right? Like it was a slightly different technique. It certainly wasn't as heavy or as, you know, close to comp weights mm -hmm. uh, as I would have liked. So I just, you know, and that's not excuses. It's just like, I think that's, I think not being able to get good deadlift training in is why my deadlift hasn't been performing well. It's just, it's unfortunate, but it is what it is. Um, so yeah, uh, we opened it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna open this up. 340. I wanna make sure we have these right. Three, no, so it was we three, opened it 335. 335. 352. Point 0.5. Well, point 0.5, yeah. And 375. And then 375, yeah. yeah. So uh, my first two deadlifts, again, like moved amazingly. Yep. Felt great. Had tons more in the tank, no questions asked like super fired up, ready to go. You know, we loaded it, the, the 375, it was gonna be, uh, I think like a 905 kilo total, which is a nice big total PR for me. Super happy to break the 900 kilo mark. Like that's been a, you know, personal goal of mine for a long time. Um, it would have bumped me just up over Mike. So he would have had to take uh, whatever he would have had to take for his third. He ended up loading and taking a shot at the world record deadlift. Um, but he would have had to, you know, pull something probably a little bit more reasonable, but also it would have been for position yeah. at that point. Um, and yeah, just lost a little bit too much position off the bottom and got stuck on my thighs and sat there kind of like crunched over. And I honestly, I, when I get into that position, I have no idea how close I am. So after Sweden, when I probably could have sold that deadlift, even though it was maybe very slightly uh, off of a perfect lockout. Yep. I sort of vowed to myself like I was never gonna like just give up and, and set it down and be like, Ugh. I was always gonna be like, if I think it's anywhere even close, I'm gonna like try to sell it and see if I can get a down command. And so I tried to sell this 375 and man, that's a bad sale. <laughs> I was a, that was not a, that was not a quality product that anyone wanted to buy. None of the referees were buying it. Uh, Gene Bell, who's like a legendary lifter, was the head referee. And I remember looking at him and I could just like barely see because I was like, like starting to black out a little bit. And he just like sat there with his hand up and was just like, no, dude, <laughs> that's not even close. Just put it down. I'm not putting my hand down. It was very much like a game of chicken that I lost. Um, and then looking back at the footage, I'm like, oh God, that was nowhere <laughs> close to locked out. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I don't think that that weight is like out of the realm of possibility. You know, maybe if I'd had another crack at it that day, even maybe I did that something silly with my bracing again, based on the way 352 moved, mm -hmm. you know, I, I thought it was a realistic attempt, but again, I just, I need more good training. So, uh, yeah, but I got my, so I totaled 877 and a half, which is like exactly how much I needed to beat Carrie's total, which was the current highest total. Yeah. Uh, we've talked about the 
weird mm -hmm. CPU qualification for Worlds thing before, but the biggest goal of the meet was to qualify yeah. for Worlds and to, you know, take that biggest total in Canada for now or for the year or whatever. And, and like, you know, secure the ticket to Worlds. So I did that. I was successful in the big goal. You know, it would have been nice to get some PRs or some more PRs and, and put together like a total PR. But yeah. again, it's very slight forward movement from being in a pretty low spot with my lower body lifts. Like, and I think it's probably my deadlift that's held me back the most, but like, you know, South Africa, I told, I think 850 which is like a f almost a 50 kilo regression from 2021 worlds. And then I totaled, I think 875 at nationals. And then I totaled 877.5. So I'm like, I'm headed in the right direction. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, well, I think what's cool is your hip that used to hurt mm -hmm. doesn't hurt anymore. Cause that used to be the thing you would compete, you get back and then you'd have to kind of like work through the hip pain before you can get back into more like heavier training. Yeah. And now it seems like that's not the issue. It's the no. knee. So if the knee can get fixed, <laughs> if the knee, if yeah. we can figure that yeah. out, there's potential that like you can actually go to a meet and not have one of the two things. <laughs> I mean, there's always a chance something else comes up, but like that'd sure. be pretty cool if that, that happened. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the, the fact that the timeline is what it is right now, and I have as much time as I have to, you know, wade through whatever is going on with my knee. Um, for anybody wondering, I've been dealing with a knee something mm -hmm. since June, 2022. And uh, got it to a point where I was pretty much symptom free just before nationals in March. Uh, competed at nationals, that set it back pretty substantially. It got really bad again. And then basically wasn't like, just didn't really have the time to get it back to, you know, um, yeah. to a good spot while prepping for North Americans. So more or less, I just kind of trained through it, dealt with symptoms at a higher level. And when I say symptoms, I mean like pain, swelling, restriction, range of motion, uh, and that kind of stuff. So now that I'm back, it is by far the worst it's ever been, which is unfortunate, but I'm also, uh, going through the jumping through all the hoops of, uh, you know, I saw a physio who referred me to a sport med who's referring me to an MRI. So I'm just waiting on a call to go get some imaging. Uh, the sport med figured he had a couple of theories on why it might be acting so stupid. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, some of those would have a minor non invasive surgical procedure or something that could potentially alleviate some symptoms and speed up some of the recovery and, you know, deal with some, I'm pretty sure there's some sort of mechanical damage. You know, it's not just one of those like biopsychosocial yeah. kind of like, you know, I'll desensitize it and, and it'll be all good. Cause it's yeah. like, yeah, I think there's like, it's, there's some bits like blown off and floating around in there kind yeah. of thing. So we'll see imaging should show it. And then I have a whole bunch of time to recover, get myself back on track and then, you know, just depending on how long that takes, I think I have potentially a good three to five months um, to be able to prep for Worlds. Yeah. So that's exciting. And so the that's, goal is Worlds and yeah. so far you are the one going. So far. As long as nobody at Eastern's beats that total. So I don't think anyone at Eastern's 2023 has signed up who's like Close. going to. Yeah. The question is whether or not Eastern's 2024, which has been moved to March, is going to be a qualifier or not. Because there's some varying opinions on whether or not that will be. The executive hasn't voted on it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we'll see if there's somebody who, who breaks that total. Um, I, I mean, if that happens, then that's, that's probably it for my world's aspirations for this year. I don't think that I'll be in a place where I will want to or can compete again in March. Like if I get wind, somebody's going there and they're trying to break it, it'll be like, well, if they do, they got it. And if they don't, then I still have it. Yeah. But I don't think I can train, compete in March, then compete again in June. Yeah. I'm too old for that shit. Now. <laughs> I just like, yeah, with my body in the state it's in, I just like, I need, I need some time to get myself together so I can do, yeah. do a good meet. Yeah. And then get shredded. 
then I'll be asking you for advice and you'll be teaching me how to train my biceps and um, look lean and aesthetic. Can't wait. Yeah. Lots of bicep curls. So many bicep curls. <laughs> I gotta make up for the last 10 years of training my arms once a year. Yep. Yeah, I got a lot of a lot of penance to pay. You wanna sign us off, Dill? You did such a good intro. Give us the give us the outro. Well, Mr. Bryce Krawchuk, thank you for coming to Calvary Barbell. <laughs> Again, thanks for having me. Man. Joining me on this uh, table talk or whatever. We oh, call that's it. copyright. <laughs> Cut Calvary that out. Bar- Cut that out. Calvary Barbell table talk. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and we'll see you next time, I guess. Yeah. 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 I'll be back in June next year Sweet. or whatever. Looking forward to have you. Yeah. Great. <laughs> see you later. See ya.